Well, there's a whole host of new Vietnam veterans who served between 1962 and 1975 eligible for these new benefits. Uh, the VA estimates the exact number at, to be almost 200,000 Vietnam veterans nationwide, Brian. And the new diseases themselves uh, are B-cell leukemias, Parkinson's disease, and a general uh, phraseology known as ischemic heart conditions. So this means, in addition to all the um, illnesses that were already on the list, that veterans with any of those illnesses now don't have to prove that they are personally associated with their military service. Um, there's a presumptive connection. Precisely. And a lot of the difficulty in connecting illness to service is eliminated by the very nature of these new presumptive conditions. And what do they get as a result of that? Well, there's presumption? two categories of help. Uh, there could be uh, disability benefits as well as health care to treat the illness. So on both accounts, it opens up the door for a sizable number of our Vietnam veterans to come and find their way into applying for these benefits and achieving the degree of health care that they earned by the nature of their service in Vietnam. So we're talking about U.S. service people who uh, were in during the Vietnam era and were over there while Agent Orange was in use. Trin, you've been an advocate for Agent Orange victims both here and in Vietnam. Yes. And we so mm -hmm. often forget about the Vietnamese and the consequences there of the Vietnam War. How many Vietnamese have been directly affected, and how do you even estimate it? Well, um, the Red Cross estimates that 3 million people are suffering from the health effects of Agent Orange, 150,000 are children born with birth defects. So, I mean, the Vietnamese government gives it at 4.8 million exposed. But the bottom line here is, my allergies are bad, so the bottom line here is that they need humanitarian um, help right now. And uh, right now, right now they, um, they're they getting very little help. There's a $9 million um, appropriate fund from the uh, Congress right now. And uh, it's spread out within three years. So $3 million for three years. Listeners, I just want to say, mm -hmm. we're making a video of this segment right now. You can see it on our website <laughs> later today. You'll see the trend looks like the picture of youth and health here in our studio, and yet her voice is cracking all over the place. So I guess you, you suffer from spring allergies. Yes, right? yes, yes. Um, and these these numbers, and I want to open up the phones, actually. So listeners, Vietnam vets listening right now, call up and talk about Agent Orange to this day. Vietnam vets or Vietnamese Americans listening right now, 212-433-WNYC. Stories or questions for our guest. Here we are still talking about Agent Orange so many years, decades even after the Vietnam War. 212 433 9692. Trin, when you look back, um, I mean, it's dioxin, right? The toxic yeah. element in Agent Orange, one of the most toxic chemicals right. known yes. to humanity, remains in the soil and water in Vietnam. Do you think anybody had any idea back then that it would be so persistent? Well, I think, well, right now when they um, when they dug up or they did research for testing, it's about five football fields the size of the soil that's contaminated. And as they get more funding in, they're going to find more. So you you see, especially in central Vietnam, Da Nang, Phu Cát, and uh, Bien Hoa, um, yeah, it's it's persistent and it's happening to third generation now. It's uh, the birth defects still happening because you're, you're constantly drinking, eating the affected areas. You know, you're, you're Because the environment is still so affected. Yes. Cleanup has either not been possible or not been sufficient. Right. And, and it's, it's about $60 million for those three uh, areas that I just told you about. Um, and, and, for example, there's um, uh, Hercules, they... Um, during the war, they manufactured in Jacksonville, Arkansas, and the EPA cleaned up. It cost $125 million, and they were able to get Hercules to reimburse them back. So that's just one of the examples of the, the cost, and you're talking you know, in, on U.S. soil. Imagine Vietnam. And Jim McDonough, director of the New York State Division of Veterans Affairs, are we seeing birth defects from Agent Orange? more than the next generation? Is it, do, do they persist two generations out in this country? Don't know precisely, but I can tell you the impact within families is prevalent. Trin and I were speaking you know, beforehand 
just as it's an issue within Vietnamese families, this issue exists for a long time within our service members' families, our veterans' families. And I wanted to mention, Brian, that some of these benefits are, in fact, eligible by extension to surviving family members. Uh, so that's important to point out, just as there isn't a longstanding effect in the Vietnamese family community, there is a longstanding effect within the veteran family community as well.